I've had my house for 15 years. It's right now in foreclosure, and it's due to why I can't make the payments on it. And it's not for my fault. I'm not scared of working. It's from not being able to catch fish to make the payments. People that sit in in them offices in them chairs up there that don't know what they don't know they don't even know what, what what's going on in the ocean. They've probably never even been in a day in their life. They, it ain't bothering them. They're not losing their homes. But if it was bothering them, and they were in my shoes, things would change, and it'd change quick. Matter of fact, I've lost my house on on count of this crap. That's man, you just. I think the most frustrating thing for me is the fact that uh, we're taking these, these small quotas that we have and we're all fishing for the same species at the same time, which we all know is the derby fishery, causing the prices to go down um, and we just don't have uh, enough seafood to go around for 12 months of the year, you know. We're sitting around four or five months of the year waiting for that season to open. We get prepared, it opens and it was just a waste of time because we didn't get paid for the time and effort spent at sea. We caught all these fish, had um, all the regulatory discards to go along with it. So it's just getting fr more frustrating all the time. It's hard to make a living right now at it. It's, I mean, when they open like bee liners up uh, the 1st of uh, July, everybody's gonna run out and catch bee liners and it floods the market. Just no consistency, uh, you know, we don't have any, it's just, it's, it's just about as messed up as it can be right now. It just doesn't make sense, man. If they could, if they could fish all the fish year round, it kind of let them breed and leave them alone a little bit, and, and the price wouldn't wouldn't drop. The price would remain the same. It wouldn't fluctuate, and these guys could put trips on and, and scratch a living. But something has got to change. You cannot keep on like you're doing, like I'm going right now. It's not feasible. And it, it's, you know, it's gonna get somebody killed directly. It's time to make it a safe fishery. It's time to make this fishery something that's profitable. And it's time to, uh, to be accountable. I'll tell you one thing that'll, that'll, that'll help these guys up here, and that's, that's the Catch Share program. Because it'll, it'll enable all the guys to go out year round until they catch that limit. And uh, the price won't fluctuate, you know what I mean? It should remain right around the same. Well, for my for, for, for my business model, I, I, you know, I'm a small boat operator. I'm gonna pick some pretty days to go fishing when they're biting. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go out and I'll uh, I'll get I'll find out what the other markets are doing, what they're looking for, and I'll go look for that particular species and I'll go fishing for it. If that species is not biting, I'll catch what's biting. That's why I'm real favorable for catch shares because that way I got mine and then I can pick and choose when to go and catch mine. You know, and fair weather or when the market's high or when you know, the restaurants need them the most. It's just, you know, it just makes so much more sense. You know, I, I don't understand the way it is now. You ain't got nothing. I'm gonna make something out of that day. I'm not gonna go do it like I did a month ago when the groupers opened, the sea bass were closed, and I couldn't find the groupers, and I caught two or 300 pounds of sea bass, and I could have been worth four or $5 a pound. I could have made some money that day. But no, I came home, went in the hole about $400, because I had a high gas bill, wasn't able to keep the sea bass, and a bunch of those floated off. In 10 years, people will probably say, "Why were we doing? Why didn't we have catch shares, man? This is, you know, it's, I mean, this is why? Why did we fight it?" 